All right, folks, now is the time to get ready for Irma. Uh, and here's the thing, what you do with your prescriptions and your first aid kit is crucial. Gilbert Wise from Prescription Shop is here to give us some, some really good advice and tips. All right, first of all, let's talk about the, um, the prescriptions because we've been telling people, you know, it's really good to have a month's supply. You say just make sure it's at least 14 days. Some people think, you know, well, I'm only going to be hunkered down for four or five days. That's not the reason that you need that extra, that you need the extra medicine. That's right. We have to remember that the pharmacy may also suffer damage. They could be without power or they could have water damage or the employees and staff and pharmacists might not be able to get to the pharmacy. So it's important to at least have 14 days supply, especially if we're talking about today being five to six days out from the hurricane. Count out your medicine. Make sure you have at least 14 days from today. All right. And also, too, they could have trouble getting deliveries, depending on how bad damage is or where the medicine's coming from. All right, so a few other things that we really need to have in our emergency kit. One really caught my attention because um, you think, you know, there's, you could encounter all kinds of things um, in a storm and especially after, and Imodium, that's one of the, because I think some of the other things we think to put in there, but anti-diarrhea medicine, very, very important. Yeah, it would be very uh, difficult for you to handle a, uh, a stomach bug or anything that might come up with uh, what you're coming in contact with during an emergency situation without a modium, uh, trying to take care of a, a diarrhea situation without mm. access to a restroom or with no water flow or if the right. plumbing is out, what well, might be a big problem. So yeah. that would be a number one for me. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, <laughs> when I saw this on the list, I was. This is something I, I didn't think of before, and I was like, oh wow, that's. Right. First and foremost, mm -hmm. top of the list right there. Okay, so what are some of the other things that you suggest we have? <clears throat> well, simply uh, pain relievers such as Tylenol or Advil, ibuprofen, acetaminophen for headaches mm -hmm. or simple injuries, minor aches and pains, things that might come up from twisting or lifting or moving differently than you might not if you're not in an emergency or disaster situation, but lifting and twisting and doing things differently if you're in water or uh, moving things around, picking things up, clearing out debris. So simply pain relievers are a good idea. And then uh, having a, a box of Band-Aids or adhesive bandages of some sort, triple antibiotic ointment for okay. simple scrapes, cuts. Um, but one of the good tips I'd like to leave is um, getting a dropper bottle, mm -hmm. putting some bleach in the dropper bottle. Just regular bleach? Just regular bleach. Okay. And if you don't have access to clean water, you can take a gallon of water. Uh, if it's clear water, eight drops of bleach and a gallon of water will sanitize it. And, and it's safe to it. drink? Safe to drink. Safe to drink and yep. you can use it for anything that you need. Eight drops of bleach, shake the bottle, let it sit for about 30 minutes and it'd be safe to drink. Okay, you also suggest having gloves and Ziploc bags. Yes. Um, for example, if you have your prescription bottle, mm -hmm. um, having a permanent marker, um, either if you write it on the label, sometimes if the label gets wet, you won't be able to read the instructions. Or if Good someone point, was trying yeah. to take care of you, they wouldn't be able to read the instructions. So taking your prescription bottle, putting it inside a Ziploc bag, and using your permanent marker to write what the medicine is and the instructions on the bag, so someone would know what to, to give if needed to help you. Because, thing, I mean, trust us from being out there you know, covering storms, even if you're just trying to evacuate or, or anything like that, everything gets wet. Right. I mean, it does. Everything gets wet. Yeah. yeah. So whether it's wind damage or water damage, it's good to have a, a Ziploc bag to protect your medicines, especially your prescription medicines. And then gloves just simply to protect your hands. You don't have to have the examination gloves like I brought here, mm -hmm. but uh, simply some dishwashing gloves or any gardening gloves just to protect your hands. Um, and, you know, another thing is the hand sanitizer. A lot of people already have this in the house, but you need to have, you need to have it on hand um, mm -hmm. for sure. Yes, that's a good point. Just a small uh, hand sanitizer container like this just to carry you a few days, uh, protecting your hands from any organisms, germs, or microorganisms that you come in contact with. Because you have to think of it like this, too. Worst case scenario, if water is, uh, is, is, is turned off and it's something that you, know, you have bottled, you want to save those bottles. For, uh, for drinking, for hygiene, right, right. and using this is just a much easier way. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we mentioned this yesterday, we want to bring it up again, sunscreen. Very right. Very important to have on hand. Right. A lot of times when a hurricane is approaching, you're not thinking about sunshine. But once the hurricane passes, the sun comes back out, and if you don't have access to sunscreen, you can get sunburned very quickly and easily. Especially if you're outside cleaning up your yard and, uh, and, and those sorts of things. Thank you so much for coming okay. in and uh, giving us these tips. We appreciate it.